Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you how to install a Taptic Engine Vibrator in an Arcwood Classic 6th Gen. This will be in replacement of the clicker, so every time you scroll or press a button it'll vibrate. And if you weren't aware, the Taptic Engine is pretty much just Apple's fancy term for the vibration motor that they use in the iPhones. This tutorial will also apply to the 5th and 7th gen as well, as they all use the same headphone jack flex cable. Although this should technically work on every iPod that has a clicker, assuming there's enough space inside and will be relatively the same process. All it is is just desoldering the original clicker, hooking up two wires, and then attaching those to the Taptic engine. So assuming you know how to use a soldering iron, this mod can be done relatively easily. I've actually tried this mod before as well. If you've been following me on TikTok, you may have seen in my first week mod video I made about a year ago, I'd hooked up a Taptic engine in that iPod too. I'd used one from an iPhone 6S in that mod, although the click was quite subtle and not very strong. The Taptic engine I decided to go with in this mod was one from an iPhone Mini. You can get those off of AliExpress for just a couple bucks, I have a link in the description. The reason I went with this one is because it's the smallest out of all the Taptic engines, which is what I wanted so I'm going to fit this in one of my Bluetooth modded iPods. First things first, you need to open up the iPod. I'll skip through the process here, although if you need help getting it open without damaging anything, you can refer to my iPod Classic 6 slash 7th gen video where I show the full process. Once the backs come off, all you need to do is disconnect the battery flex cable and the headphone jack like this. As you can see, this iPod already has the hard drive replaced with an M Cider SSD and had a 2000mAh battery installed, along with Bluetooth as well. This was also my first attempt at installing my USB-C kit that I'll hopefully have available soon for both mail-in repair and as a DIY kit, although I still have some more testing to do with that first. Although in order to complete this mod you'll have to replace both the hard drive and battery as there's just not enough space to fit all of this with the original ones. Now let's pick a position to mount it. With the setup I'm using, there's just enough space to fit it in the spot where the original battery went, and still have enough room for all the Bluetooth mod components as well. It'd also work in the slim version if you went for a 3000mAh battery and an iFlash quad too. When it comes to the thick version, obviously you'd have much more space to work with. Now from what I've read online, it looks as if the larger Taptic engines, for instance the ones in the iPhone 7 and 8 Plus, will give a stronger vibration than the smaller ones, although I've not personally tested it. But that is something to keep in mind if you're interested in doing this mod. The only downside being it might limit what other mods you could also fit in here. In this case, those ones wouldn't have fit in this particular iPod. So if you're going for the max vibration, maybe consider an iPhone 7 Plus Taptic engine. But if you want to do it as I've done here and also fit it alongside with the Bluetooth mod, the iPhone Mini one's probably the best choice. As you can see, there are three screw mounts sticking off the side. We'll need to remove those in order to get it to fit. I do that just using my pliers to bend them off, and as you can see, it now fits perfectly. It's also worth noting that you'll have to mount the Taptic Engine hard up against the rear housing in order for the vibrations to transfer, so keep that in mind when picking a position to mount it. Now to wire it up. First we've got to remove the connector on the Taptic Engine. I did that by first applying some flux paste all over the connector. This stuff pretty much just makes the solder flow more easily and is a must have if you do projects like this often. Again, you can get this off of AliExpress for just a couple dollars. I'll put a link to buy it in the description. I then used my soldering iron to remove it like this. Just be careful not to rip off any of the pads. I won't speed any of this stuff up, so if you're following along at home, you can see exactly how I've done it. Once that's off, we can move over to the clicker and remove that using the same process. First by applying flux, then just holding the soldering iron in each pad till it's free. Although be careful when removing it as there's a bunch of small components on the side of that flex cable and if you damage any of them or tear the flex cable, you can break it and you have to order a new one. Uh, that's probably the, one of the most fragile parts on this whole iPod as well and a tear usually results in no audio or even no click in this case. But yeah, if you do end up stuffing up your headphone jack flex cable, I have those for sale on my website. So I'll have links in the description. You can buy one of those from me or I'll have AliExpress links as well if that's cheaper for you. Once that's off, we can grab two bits of wire and hook them up to the connection points. I'll have a picture on the screen so you know which ones. The third pad's blank as well and is really just there to give the clicker more stability. Although it says the top one's positive and the bottom one's negative, it doesn't really matter which way we wire these up to the Taptic engine, it'll still work the same. It's important to use appropriately sized wires when doing mods like this, as space is limited inside and using too big a wire can cause issues when sealing everything back up. I'll have a link to the wire I use in the description. Alternatively, you could also salvage the wires from inside an old or broken USB cable, as those are usually the perfect size as well. Next, we've got to strip down the ends and expose some of the wire. I usually just do that using my scissors. Now just wiring those up to the Taptic Engine. 
I couldn't actually find the pinout for it online, so I just had to guess pretty much. Luckily, I found it pretty quick. For the iPhone mini one, it's just the pads on the outside of the connector, which also happens to be the largest pads. I forgot to take a picture of it up close, but you can pretty much just copy what I did in the video. There's actually footage online of people hooking these Taptic engines up to like audio outputs and playing music through them, which is pretty cool. And since the original clicker that's in there is kind of like a speaker as well, I thought I might try hooking like an amplifier circuit board up to the uh, to the two wires coming off of where the clicker originally was, and then hooking that up to the Taptic engine in hopes that it'd make it louder. Although unfortunately that didn't end up working. Before I mount it back in the iPod, I decided to wrap it in captain tape as the flex cable sticking out the side was looking pretty fragile. Captain tape is the yellow stuff that you find inside a lot of electronics. It's heat resistant, non-conductive, and doesn't leave any residue behind, so it's perfect to use in projects like this. Although you could probably just use sticky tape in this case if you don't have any of that. Just make sure you wrap it on tight, because as I mentioned earlier, we'll be gluing this to the frame, and if the tape's on there loosely, it'll absorb a lot of the vibrations and make it feel weaker. Before we glue it all into place, it's a good idea to give it a proper test first. I plugged the headphone jack and battery flex cables in and booted the iPod up. Make sure the click is enabled in the iPod settings menu. If it's set to headphone only or off, it obviously won't work. Once it's enabled, you should be able to feel it vibrate every time you scroll and click. If you press the Taptic engine hard up against the back of the rear housing, you'll see how the vibration transfer is much better. Once you're satisfied that it's all working, now we can glue it into place. I'd recommend using a hard drying super glue for the best effect. Then pressing down on it with a bit of pressure till it fully dries. Now to just seal the iPod back up, making sure none of the wires get caught in between the frame and the rear housing. Again, I'd recommend checking out my iPod Classic 6th 7th gen guide in order to get the rear housing back on so that it looks like it's never been opened. You can push the clips along the side rails back into place and push the sides in a bit too, just in case they've flexed out when prying it off. Another little tip here, if you've got one of these um, iPod Classic 6th 7th gen front plates in black and you've opened it and you can see it's got all these little uh, silver scrape marks all along the side from sticking the iPod opening tool in. What you can actually do is get like a, either a black permanent marker or a paint pen and then just go over all of those little paint scrapes with that and it'll cover it up and when you seal it back up since like it's in that little gap a little bit the the permanent marker or the paint pen won't sort of scrub off very easily and it'll just look a whole lot better as well. Although I'd recommend doing that before you seal it back up because after you seal it back up then it's hard to get the permanent marker in that little gap. And that's much less of an issue on the uh, silver front plates as well as you can probably guess because they just blend in a whole lot better. Although actually if you use a box cutter blade to open it instead of the iPod opening tools you can avoid all those little paint scrapes and I'll have a little tutorial for that coming out in the future as well. It's also quicker so yeah. Once it's fully sealed up, now we can give it a final test. As you can see, the iPod's making a vibration on each click and you still do get a bit of the sound as well. In terms of how the click actually feels, I'd say it's probably similar to like when you're typing on your phone on the keyboard. It's just a very subtle sort of little vibration, you know, it's nothing too major. Uh, it could be stronger. I mean, if you want it to be stronger, yeah, you'd go for one of those iPhone 7 Taptic engines. I haven't actually tried it, but I've heard that they're a lot stronger. But yeah, I just wanted to show that the iPhone mini one's good because uh, you can fit it in the uh, Bluetooth mod as well with all the other mods that people like to do to these things. So yeah, overall I would recommend doing this mod as it's pretty easy and you can easily fit it in there as well. And it just makes the iPod feel a whole lot more futuristic, especially when you pair it with Rockbox and Bluetooth and all the other sort of mods that I've got going on here. So yeah would definitely recommend it. And yeah, I was thinking about adding these into my Bluetooth upgrade kits that I'm selling on my website as an additional option for like an extra 10 or 20 bucks or something like that. So 
If that's something you'd be interested in, um, I know, let me know. We'll put it in the comments or something like that, and I might add it in the future. If you've got an iPod you want to get fixed, make sure to check out my website. I've got heaps of parts available for sale there, or you could book a mail and repair as well. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Hope to see you next time. Bye.